Our first question comes from Courtney Boudreaux from OhSoGray.com. So we've seen the first three episodes, and they were great. Um, can you tell us a bit, you know, what is kind of um, Bjorn's ultimate goal? We know that he's getting into the fighting, but does he have kind of a bigger plan or aspirations? Yes, I think that he's um, he's totally been inspired by what his father's been able to accomplish, and that um, I think like any any son uh, of um, of a father, um, they you know they they want to be they want to make their father proud, and they want to be. I think especially you know amongst this family, there is deep deep down a certain amount of aspiration to um, to not only fulfill what his father has helped to accomplish, but to um, to accomplish even more than what his father than than what his father ever could, um, and, and and you know that's one thing that they really prided themselves on was was their fame because that was you know that would be how their legend would live on. Our next question comes from Libya Elliman with Wienopolis. I was just wondering, from your character's point of view, uh, your father has basically not approved of the choice of your mate. And it kind of got exasperated in the in the last couple of episodes that we saw, to the point where he's blatantly stated his disappointment of uh, Bjorn. And I was wondering, do you th- what lengths do you think Bjorn will go to redeem himself in his father's eyes? Or conversely, do you think he actually needs to? Do you think he's actually done anything wrong? No, I think that he does know that he did something wrong. Um, I think it was, and, and that is, and he will go to the end of the earth to regain his father's trust. Um, and I think you can look forward to seeing that. I think that um, he always knew in his heart that he, she wasn't ready, and he blames himself for for not speaking up even more than he should have. Um, you know, he was so focused on on the goal that the family had, uh, that you know, his father and. And, in, and, and he had, which was, you know, to colonize, uh, you know, Paris. And, and at this point right now, it's to, um, you know, it was to fight the, the two armies. So um, he was so focused on that, he forgot about, I think, you know, the more important thing, which is family. And that's what his father was was saying, um, was that, you know, it's still your responsibility to let her know that she was, you know, stupid enough to go into battle when she clearly wasn't ready. Our next question comes from Anushika Ganigoda with Mike the Fanboy. Um, so the two prominent male figures in Bjorn's life betrayed the family in like one way or the other. So how do you think that affected who he is now? For instance, like do you think that made him more sensitive towards women since he saw what his mother went through? Absolutely, yes. And I also think that that's a great question. I also think that he's he's found a medium between the two. Um, you know, he's found a certain ruthlessness, but able to keep um, a poise that, um, you know, and, and confidence in, in his own judgment um, that was lacking um, amongst the influential people in his life. Um, you know, in a way, I think Bjorn is, is, has kind of become the, the perfect mix, but as he will soon realize, to be powerful and to command, um, you know, um, a presence amongst such ruthless people, you have to have a certain ruthlessness yourself. And, um, I think he's, you know, he's really become his own man. He's, he's about to learn a very valuable lesson, but he's very smart. And I think that's why at such a young age, people had already looked up to him. Our next question comes from Gabrielle Pantera with Hollywood Daily Star. My question is, what do you think your character needs to learn this season? Great question. Um, I think he needs to learn um, that to be a leader, you have to encompass a certain sense of ruthlessness. Um, and because um, right now he is a perfect medium, I think, um, in encompassing a, a confidence in himself, yet um, yet also keeping a poise. Um, and I think at one point he will come to realize that that yes, it is very important, but at the same time, um, to be a leader, you have to make decisions that um, aren't always in everyone's best favor. Our next question comes from Jamie Ruby with Sci Fi Vision. Can you just talk about quickly how you originally got the part and what it was that you attract that attracted you to Bjorn? Yeah, um, it, it was actually funny how this actually came about. I 
um, a woman named Sherry Marsh, who's one of our executive producers on, on the show, had seen me in the Hunger Games and um, had seen that I you know, had a strong resemblance to Nathan who played the original Bjorn and, um, and that um, I resembled you know, Travis as well. Um, and she contacted uh, m- uh, my team and, and brought up this show and said, is Alexander doing anything? And I just finished Lone Survivor at the time. And, um, and we had a talk, and I never thought I, w- I would ever do a TV show. So um, and I think this was just, I think, when TV was, you know, really becoming, you starting to have some really great content. And I hadn't actually seen mm-hmm. Viking yet. So I started watching the show, and I called some of my friends and told them what was happening. And they were like, you would be an idiot not to go on this show because they were already huge fans of it. And I hadn't been able to see it because I hadn't been watching very much TV. So I went in and I met with um, the presidents of uh, MGM Television um, and everybody who's involved with Vikings, and including Travis and Catherine. And then I did a reading with Travis and Catherine. Um, and next thing I know, I was offered the role. And um, still um, up in the air until I saw... Um, until I saw the potential, until Sherry really pulled me aside and said, you know, Alexander, this is going to be um, huge and an amazing learning experience for you. And it was exactly that. Um, I've learned so much in working with such great actors. It's been, it has been the creative experience of my life this far. Our next question comes from Elenia Lutz with YEC. I am curious if you can give us a sneak peek on how do, would you define your relationship with Lagertha this season, and for your fans, what should they be looking out the most for? You can look for more of a camaraderie amongst the two as opposed to a you know, mother and son relationship. Um, this season is a very, very big one for my character in that um, um, his parents are going to him for advice. And, you know, they realize that he's always encompassed a sense of, um, um, he's always been a bit of a wise soul and he's always, he, he's always, he's very intelligent and in he speaks when, when he needs to, but he, he's a very good listener and he's very intelligent, um, and calculating. So, um, you'll see down the road that, um, his father and his mother will both seek his help and you will see, um, him really, really coming to his own man, especially towards the end of this season, um, like you've never seen before. Our next question comes from Jill Pant- Pantosi with the Mary Sue. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about your character's relationship with uh, Corin this season. Obviously, in season two, she was very dedicated to learning how to fight and being, becoming a shield maiden and We've seen images of you two very, you know, bloody uh, in some of the promos. So, can you talk a little about that? Yes, in season two, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot left unsaid about their relationship, and it was supposed to be vague in that way because I think that there was so much going on, and it was so little light shed on their relationship. And I think in season three, you're going to see that um, they have grown into something very, very special. Um, and I'm loving and really deep. And um, Bjorn gets some some news that is phenomenal. Um, have you seen the first two episodes? I have not, no. Okay, so um, Bjorn gets some news that's phenomenal and that basically his family is going to grow. Um, and he, um, and that is very, very great news for him. Um, but, unfor- but unfortunately, um, Things take turns for the worse, and something very, very severe happened. And you're going to realize how how deep um, their relationship really goes, because um, a very big obstacle is put between them. Um, and it's going to be very, very interesting, I think, for the fans to see how much they're willing to overcome it. Our next question comes from Meryl Gottlieb with the Daily Quirk. I just wanted to ask, kind of, about um, what it was like to you know, has such a popular show that isn't just something completely made up, you know, it's based a lot in history and why do you think that's pretty, you know, significant for the audience and uh, what you like about being a part of that show? I mean, it's honestly, it, it has been a creative, a creative experience in my life and one of the very few experiences that um, I, I never really grasped the gravity of the situation. Usually people ask, you know, were you happy this was such a success or do you know it was a success? I had no idea. Um, 
and I didn't, and, and I always thought that the show would be would, would do great, but I never realized how much it would mean to me. And it's really just been the creative experience of my life working with such great actors. And and I love history, and I and I I've that's always been one of my favorite subjects growing up. Um, so just being able to be a part of a historical drama and and explore, um, you know, our past as a civilization, and also just continue to grow as a as a young actor has just been. I mean, phenomenal. It's been the experience of, of my life. Our next question comes from Megan Schaefer with International Business Times. Michael Hurst teased in a Reddit MA that, uh, that now that Bjorn is all grown up, he will pose as a challenge to Ragnar as the story continues. Have you felt that shift in Bjorn and Ragnar's relationship from season two to season three? Absolutely. I think there's been a, uh, a massive shift. And I think I'm, I'm very excited for the fans to see this season, definitely more so than the second season. Um, I, 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 you know, obviously I love this second season, just being a part of everything. But now you're really going to see Bjorn um, as I had always intended him to be, um, and you know, he's he's not a boy anymore. You know, he's really become um, a man, and um, you will start seeing his father um, seek out his help, um, as opposed, you know, to the opposite way. You'll start seeing him take charge in his, in his own right, and um, he's very much a part of the team as, as opposed to you know, the new rookie. Um, so I, it's it's really just been um, a phenomenal experience, and I can't wait for the fans to see this just grow because he really does this season, and he really is just setting up for, I mean, the end of this season is just insane, and I can't wait to see everybody's reaction. Our next question comes from Tina Charles with TV Goodness. Hey there. Um, you might have touched on this a little bit already um, in this in this last answer, but what kind of warrior will Bjorn be when the Vikings go to France? He, uh, he'll be ruthless and um, and calculated, you know. And I think that that's um, you know what his father has always been uh, to an extent. But you'll see uh, a new side to Bjorn that I, I don't think anybody has seen before. In that he's he's not just he's fighting for himself anymore, but he's he's commanding. Um, you know, more than just himself. He he starts taking charge of, of other fa- facets of the attack and um, and he's really just coming to his own. And you really start to see, or you really do see Bjorn just as a man now um, and, and how I always intended him to be. So I really can't wait to see how the fans react to this. The next question comes from Sue Lookenbach with Muse Lead Blog. Hi, Alex. Um, we were at Comic Con with you when there were some, you know, water throwing and some pranks. Um, how and we know that you know, as a group, you guys are really close. Um, especially you and Travis Fimmel. Um, What sort of antics did you get up to um, this year, off screen? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so many and so many. I can't say <laughs> an interview, but but I, I, will, I will tell you that you know it always involves. You know, every morning, early in the morning, I'll just I'll find a way to, to tackle them to the ground, and then she'll end up throwing something at me halfway through the day. Um, and it is every day you, you have to be watching your back. Um, one, you know, one day we had ice cream on set, and I just would take a cone and just threw it in his face. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, you know, it really just makes everything more exciting. And um, I will say that for as as you know crazy antics as we get into when it comes to actually working we are very professional <laughs> and, uh, and <laughs> Travis more than anybody I know so it's been also the experience of my life working with him and uh, it's been just I mean we love each other and I love everybody I work with our next question comes from Ernie Estrella with Buzz Focus my question is uh, how much do you think Rollo's guidance makes an impact uh, on the way he he is this season, as well as uh, how how much of a leadership role he'll he'll uh, undertake. And uh, I, I know we, we get to see a little bit of of their interaction this season, but do we get to see more of that? Is that something that gets uh, shed a little more spotlight? Absolutely. I think that when his father, especially in the second season, when Ragnar was always busy with um, you know with with his own aspirations. Um, Bjorn had come back and was very much in need of a father figure to, you know, to coach him and welcome him back. And Rolo really did take that on. In this season, you will see that, but in a totally 
the, the total 180. Um, I think now, you know, you'll see Jules come to Roller Aid and you'll see Bjorn um, come to Ragnar Aid. And he's, he's very much his own man now. And he's, you know, he's learned all he can and still values everyone's, um, everyone's opinion. But at the same time, he knows that he has a voice now and, and everybody else knows that his voice should be heard because um, he is very calculating and he is very smart. Our next question comes from Marianne Butler with AggressiveComics.com. So uh, I was curious, out of all the weapons that you've been working with doing Vikings, what has been your favorite? I mean, I, I love just the axe because it's just, it's so Viking and um, it's probably one of the hardest to fight with. But I always force myself to because I just like how, um, I mean, how real it is and, and just how different it is because you, know, you can always fight with a sword. But obviously the easiest one to work with is the sword. So, um, the worst one is the shield. So whenever you're in a fight, you always try to get rid of that first. <laughs> you totally have the build to uh, wield that axe, though. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> we do have one more question um, to do. Uh, one is from April Neal. With monsters and critics, uh, you're the first son. Um, I'm really curious, and I'm a huge fan of the show, and I'm I'm really involved with all the characters, and and I I, I just have to wonder, are you going to have any kind of uh, interaction with Oslog's sons, or are they going to be perpetual children in this story? I mean, great swaths of time because of the length of travel happen, and they've got to be growing up. Mm-hmm. You, that, that's a, that is a phenomenal question, and only a really true fan, I think, could, could be able to ask that. Um, yes, and historically, um, uh, they actually grow a very, very close relationship, um, so much so that after their father passed, um, they teamed up and declared war on the world. Um, and, you know, depending on how long this show will go for, um, that is something that all the fans can look forward to, to see this new bond of brothers um, come together, because that's really when it became, you know, that's really when the Vikings um, became well-known around the world, because people knew this group of, you know, these brothers that had come um, for vengeance. Um, and, and yes, yeah, so you can absolutely look forward to that. And, you know, what's so funny is you know, those kids kind of are like my little brothers. <laughs> Whenever I'm on set, you know, I love them and, um, I see them, you know, all the time whenever they're on set. So we always get to hang out. And they're just the most adorable kids on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be continued peace between Oslog and your mother, Lagatha? Uh, circumstantially, something happens that will deter from that entirely. However, um, I think that when they are all back together, that um, n- no, I don't, I don't believe that there will be peace forever. I think something has to happen. Um, I'm just in, in the dark as, as that as you are, though. 